Hi guys. It is a cloudy but balmy and otherwise pleasant day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization and we have somehow stumbled into Friday December 4th 2020 closing in on the end of 2020. Good Lord. <clears throat> My name is Sam Mitchell. You have found Collapse Chronicles. And since it is Friday, we're going to do what we just do every single Friday, and that is check in with uh, our friends at MangaBay.com with Rhett Butler and the boys and girls over at MangaBay.com to see uh, what they have on their minds for my weekly ecological meltdown roundup rant, where we just see what has been going on on this planet outside of the C word and the temper tantrum. Okay, since you probably have never heard any of this on the mainstream media, we're going to start over there in Borneo, where I did not realize until this minute <clears throat> that there are still freshwater dolphins living uh, in Borneo, probably in rivers like this beautiful undisclosed river in front of me. Uh, so let's start over there in Borneo where dolphins face growing pressure as development eats into Borneo's interior. The ecosystems of East Kalimantan province and in Indonesian Borneo face increasing pressures hmm, due to mining, logging, industrial agriculture, infrastructure projects, and a plan to establish a new capital city. Just one of the species imperiled by this rapid transformation is the Irrawaddy dolphin. The estuarine population, you know, the ones that live you know, out around the mangroves already face severely negative impacts from increasing shipping traffic and coastal development. While inside the island, a critically endangered population of freshwater Irrawaddy dolphins living in the middle reaches of the Mahakam River are also under increasing pressure due to climate change, oil palm cultivation, coal mining, and transport. Do you think so? And that pretty much, you know guys, you can take this story and multiply it times about 10 or 12 million and do your own math. Uh, and guys, uh, I have a lot on my plate today. I don't know how many of these I'll get to. All right. Um, this is more on uh, kind of a cousin to a couple of other rants I've had talking about uh, how the international banksters behind it all are going to save the planet. You know, the, the very guys, when you dig down, it, it is the big banks behind it all that make all of this, everything I just mentioned in that last thing, possible. Uh, and so now we have a new initiative called the Finance for Biodiversity Initiative. Yes, that's kind of like the Sancho Panza for Chipmunk uh, Protection Initiative. The Finance for Biodiversity Initiative wants to get governments, companies, and most importantly, the financial sector, otherwise known as the planet-eating banksters behind all of this, to factor in nature and biodiversity and not just carbon emissions into their decision making. I was completely unaware that uh, carbon emissions were factored into their decision making, but uh, 
at least they do recognize that there's something other than carbon emissions behind planet eating. Yes. I love this. The, this is a new term for the collapse. Green financing. Green financing. There you go. Okay, and so... As I mentioned each week, you know, Manga Bay has its own YouTube channel, so they put up a YouTube video each week. So over there on Manga Bay's channel, uh, what are we looking at is sugar versus the forest. And there, this is, they go over to Uganda uh, to the biodiverse Bugoma Forest where the government has authorized clearing the biodiverse Bugoma forest to make way for sugar plantations, apparently. We need more sugar. This is probably... Uh, I, I, I haven't seen their new video. I'm guessing <clears throat> that the sugar cane is more for biofuels than it is for actual tooth rotting sugar. It's probably both. But uh, this prob this this smells of this biofuels. You know how we're gonna save the planet from fossil fuels by bulldozing down biodiverse rainforest to plant sugar cane so we can reduce our carbon emissions and say that biofuels are green, or they're probably part of the green finance initiative. Okay. And so, you know, um, how many times have I done stories on, uh, you know, where they go out and, and, and science goes out and names a brand new species of, of animal. Uh, and then on the very day that they officially give it a new name, it is already critically endangered. And so I guess they have a podcast uh, <clears throat> here asking the question, Will a newly discovered ape species face a damned future? You know, damned, a play on words, uh, meaning both a condemned future and literally a damned future. You know, with this dam, you know, this giant hydroelectric dam. Of course, the answer to both sides of that question is exactly what they were, will face, and this is the latest update, as you probably know, uh, with this new orangutan species. Uh, <clears throat> as with many other animals in Sumatra, the newly described eighth ape species are unique creatures that are critically threatened, with a maximum of 800 individuals estimated to be living in increasingly fragmented habitat. And so, as we probably know, um, a hydroelectric dam proposed for the center of the animal's tiny remaining territory challenges this special species chance of survival, as well as that of 20 other threatened species which also live in the area. So this is an interview with biologist Dr. Puji Rianti. Uh, about the damned future of these orangutans and 23 other species of critically endangered animals getting ready to go underwater. Uh, okay, let's look at some mega trends with major consequences for forests. We have a new study. A newly published study identifies five large-scale trends that substantially affect forests in the future, in both negative and positive ways. Yes, 
I'm sure the positive ways. These five megatrends are number one, changing rural demographics, meaning more humans. Uh, number two, forest mega disturbances translate more humans, an increase in the middle class in low income countries, say more purchasing power of more humans, uh, increased access and use of technology can you say better ways to destroy a forest and of course the development of large-scale infrastructure uh, you know the of course referring a lot here to the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative uh, all right um, Uh, okay, uh, I'm going to skip over the C word. Uh, all right, how are we going to save life on Earth? To save life on Earth, consult this new map. There you go. A new study shows that 50.4%, so a new study shows that pretty much exactly one half of the land on Earth needs to be protected to reverse biodiversity loss, halt climate change, and prevent future pandemics with Latin America countries poised to lead that movement. Yeah, with, uh, with Jair Bozonero at, uh, at the head of the reins of the largest Latin American country. I'm sure Bozo Nero is going to throw his weight behind, you know, that this, this, this in, you're hearing more and more of this, give humans half the planet, give one species half the planet, give every other species of earthling we share this planet with, let's call it 10 million, uh, they, they get one half, we get one half, humans get one half, the other 10 million earthlings get the other half. Yes. Um, anyway, I'm sure that's going to happen. Gee, you will not believe this one. Money to burn. New study finds that fire prevention incentives in Indonesia do not work. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> Villagers in Indonesian Borneo that were offered financial incentives to not burn their land for farming were just as likely continue just as likely to continue setting fires as villagers that received no financial assistance. Imagine that. It made no difference. How, how many, yeah, I give, giving an Indonesian planet nibbler uh, money uh, if, for him to promise not to burn his land. He will go out and buy a new shotgun just like that. What you heard there, I'm hoping, uh, was part of this wild hog hunt out here in the swamp. These wild hogs have completely taken over this swamp. And they're pretty much just inviting anybody to come out and kill all the wild hogs that you can. Uh, anyway, I'll, I'll get getting back to why would villagers who promise, if you give me money not to burn my land, I won't burn my land, why would they walk back on their promise? Uh, I will let you figure out the, your own head scratching there. All right. Okay, what is the latest 
massive Amazon deforestation risk. We don't hear much from French Guiana. You know, French Guiana is one of those little uh, three countries at the top. Is I believe it's French Guiana, Guyana, and, and Suriname. You know, up there at the east of Venezuela and north of... Uh, Brazil, you never hear about those, so let's check in with French Guiana, where we find French Guiana soy biofuel power plants risk major, I'm sorry, massive Amazon deforestation. The French government, with the support of Fre President Emmanuel Macaroni, appears eager to approve legislation that would bypass French environmental laws banning large-scale deforestation in order to build several soy-fired biofuel power plants in French Guiana. There you go. Currently, 98%, 98% of French Guiana is still covered in Amazon rainforest and man mangrove forest. Unbelievably, but it's not going to last that way. Thank you, Emmanuel Macaroni. As the largest of the proposed biofuel plants uh, would require between 84,000 and 140,000 metric tons of soy per year to generate enough liquid biofuels to power one plant. And growing that much soy would require a large amount of rainforest clearing, totaling somewhere between 536 and 900 square miles, nearly three times larger than the land area of New York City. Yes, uh, this is uh, Almuth M. String, a biomass researcher with Biofuel Watch. Quote, the fact that France is pushing for policy deviations in French Guiana from European Union sustainability standards is incredibly alarming. There will be an impact on forest if they change the laws, and it could be pretty massive. <clears throat> you think so? <coughs> wow. You will not believe this, guys. We have another UN fail. How many UN fails have they racked up? This is the latest one. Countries fall short of UN pledge to protect 10% of the ocean by 2020. You know, which ends in, what, 26 days? Ten years ago, the international community pledged to protect 10% of the ocean by the end of 2020 under the auspices of the UN Convention on Biological Diversity. Ah, you will not believe this. However, the international community is failing and falling well short of that goal only about 7.5% of the oceans is now protected. Uh, even proponents of marine protected areas acknowledge they are not always as effective as they could be. Conservationists, so since they failed on protecting 10%, they are now pressing for the adoption of a more ambitious new international goal, protecting 30% of the oceans by 2030. <sighs> Does anybody believe one word coming out of the United Nations with all of their greenwashing crap, kick the can down the road pledges? 
please give me a break. Um, anyway, guys, I, there is a lot here, and I am not even halfway down. All right, let's check in with the Greenland Ice Sheet. The glaciers of the Greenland Ice Sheet are running away. Greenland's massive ice sheet will continue shrinking even if snowfall rates return to the higher levels of decades ago. When the ice sheet was stable, a new study shows, rates of ice loss, loss climbed dramatically this century before settling in at a higher sustained rate of decline. Yes, looking at a bleak trend, a bleak trend that will accelerate sea level rise. Uh, all right, we were just looking at the UN failing on protecting the ocean, so let's look at the European Union how well it's doing protecting its piece of the, the, the pie. Layers of regulations to protect European seas are not working. Audit finds. A recent report published by the European Court of Auditors found that the European Union was not doing enough to protect and restore its oceans despite having various policies in place to support conservation efforts. Yes. In particular, the report found that only 1%, 1% of more than 3,000 marine protected areas provided full protection to marine habitats and that the areas generally failed to protect biodiversity. The report also found that sustainable fishing and environmental standard targets were not being met and that EU funding was not being adequately utilized for conservation efforts. There you go. And then they look at uh, trawling in sensitive marine habitats in the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, all right. It looks like the pulp producers are doing just fine. They are down there. Uh, in Indonesia as pulp producers pull off $168 million Indonesian tax twist. I love the name of this uh, pulp producer, TPL. I guess that means toilet paper uh, liquidators. Uh, in, in April, two major pulp and paper producers in Indonesia may have deprived the country of $168 million just in the years between, oh, in the years from 2007 to 2018 by mislabeling a type of pulp that they export to China. Yep. Uh, let's go over to a mountain range in Cambodia you have never heard of. This is Cambodia's Cardamom Mountains where we find government-linked land grabs are threatening Cambodia's Cardamom or Cardamom Mountains. The Cardamom Mountains sit off the Gulf of Thailand in southern Cambodia and provide important habitat for a multitude of plant and animal species, many of them already threatened with extinction. Due 
to the mountain's remoteness, they had largely been spared by human encroachment that has destroyed much of the rainforest across the country. Until this year, when infrastructure developments opened up much of the area to loggers, poachers, and others seeking to exploit the region's forest. Satellite data show deforestation is continuing to surge in the cardamoms despite most of the range being formally demarcated as protected land. Sources familiar say that the Hun Sen government is encouraging land grabbing inside protected areas in a bid to build support of the 2022 election. Uh, all right, guys, I'm just going to read the headlines and wrap this up. I realize I'm talking to myself and I'm starving. All right, just the headlines. Ecuador's new palm oil law is a boom for a boon for palm oil producers, but not for the planet. Yes, uh, how about, uh, this is actually uh, all over the mainstream media, Amazon deforestation tops reaches a 12-year high, topping 11,000 square kilometers in Brazil uh, this year, where deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon uh, is the highest it has been since 2008, uh, representing a 9.5% increase over the same period last year and nearly triple uh, the target established by Brazil's climate change law. Yes. Uh, all right, what's going on with certified palm oil? Certified palm oil is linked to worse, to worse ecological and social outcomes for Indonesian villagers. There you go. The certified palm oil is worse for the planet than the uncertified palm oil. Yes. Okay, as Madagascar has been completely destroyed, what are they doing? Madagascar moves to reopen domestic trade in timber? Yes. Asking the question, why did the woolly rhino go extinct? Ha. Huh. I'm going to let you answer the question, why did the woolly rhino and every other species of uh, our fellow earthlings on this planet that has gone extinct, oh, in the last 10,000 years or so, I think we all know the reason every species that has gone extinct went extinct. It's because of one species. All right. Uh, okay. We're just going to wrap up. I guess this is anywhere in a poor country. Big mammals are at risk in the world's poorest countries even within parks. Yes, 40 years of global conservation research reveals that mammal populations are declining due to hunting, can you say poaching in the bushmeat trade, in poor countries and within protected areas, especially in sub-Saharan Africa. Large mammals are particularly vulnerable since their slow growth and reproduction rates make it harder for them to bounce back 
from poaching. Yes, in Asia, protected areas with tighter enforcement actually have higher rates of population loss. You know, the tougher the law, the higher the loss. Uh, and, and here we are in paradise when we're trying to kill the wild hog large mammals here and they're doing just fine. But anyway, I got to wrap this up, guys. I have a lot on my plate today. Uh, and I got to get out there, speaking of hogs, and cook me a uh, domestic pig. I wish one of these hog hunters would drop off one of these carcasses off at my place. Anyway, get out there and enjoy your wild hog while you still can. Bye, guys.